Yep. Thank you for doing that. Oh, there it is. I'm glad somebody thought about it. Uh, I'm taking note of who is attending. My Nathan. I saw Tracy around, right? She's in fact yes. sharing her screen. Thank you. Tracy. There you go. Perfect. All right, welcome everyone. Let's get started. This is the weekly TSC call. As you all know, we are governed by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed. Thank you. So after several calls being hijacked by the urgency we had in front of us of dealing with the uh, Firefly project proposal, I uh, happy to now resume our more normal kind of agenda and uh, try to tackle some of the issues that we have on the, on the backlog. So first, let's start with the announcements. So of course, we have the weekly um, developer newsletter. I hope everybody remembers. Please do try to consider this and see if there are opportunities for you to contribute content. I will try. Um, David, I think you added the maintainer orientation call. Yeah, so just as a note, next week after this call, we will be having a call where maintainers are welcome to come and ask any questions. We'll also be sharing some resources. <laughs> Sorry about my dog. We'll be sharing some resources that will help people uh, connect with new contributors. We did this a few months ago where we talked about metrics and it sounded like there was interest in doing this again on a semi-regular basis. So maybe once a quarter we'll do a orientation call for maintainers. So if that's of interest, please feel free to join us next week. All right, thank you. Is there any other announcements anyone wants to make? All right, if not, let's carry on. So first we have a couple of reports. Hyperledger Explorer came in last week, I believe. Uh, there were some, so the main question that was, uh, that came up was the fact that they asked, you know, what would it take for us to get out of incubation into active slash graduated uh, status. So Tracy responded kindly, pointing out to the documentation. And uh, she did raise the question as to whether they should reuse the previous uh, request. And uh, she favored the creating a new page, which I agreed to. Um, so this is all kind of background process happening. I, uh, I remember they had a challenge with the uh, exit criteria, especially with regard to diversity. I don't know if it's any better now, but I'm happy for them to take a crack at it if they feel like they could qualify. Is there any questions otherwise or comments? Nope, all right. And then we are waiting for the Avalon report. And I saw Hot kind of snuck in the report for Ursa at the late hour. I, so I don't know how many people actually had a chance to go through this yet, but it's okay. If you have any questions now, please, you're welcome to raise them. Hot is here. So he's the author of the report. We can uh, definitely pound them. <laughs> with questions, but otherwise I will, um, yeah. So there's only a few people who had a chance to look at it. So I will I will um, put that back on the agenda for next week so that people have had a chance to look at it. So if there's any questions, is there anything you wanted to bring up uh, hot or is it the usual, hey, we're happy to work with other people. I don't think there's anything too exciting uh, that we mentioned in the quarterly report. So okay. uh, 
if people have questions, I'd obviously be happy to answer them. But otherwise, I don't think there's a lot to discuss. All right. Thank So that then brings us to the discussion part of the agenda. So first, I wanted us to talk about the project quilt because so they reported they would uh, go dormant. And as a re in reaction, we created the dormant state that we added to the project lifecycle, but we haven't officially moved quilt to dormant. So I think we need to make a decision quickly to just say, yes, okay, we're moving quilt to dormant state. I second. All right, thank you. I think we can go quick on that one. So I'm happy I, to do. I, uh, yeah, I do Tracy. have a question though, Arno, sorry. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Having problems with sharing and uh, doing everything else. Um, so my question is, have we contacted Quilt? Because I know they asked for this, that we added the state uh, after they asked, but I don't think we ever necessarily got back to them that this was now going to be a state that was available. So I just want to make sure that they aren't surprised, like, oh, I didn't know this all happened and, uh, you know, have some sort of comment about it. But uh, that's my only question. So I guess the answer is no, I don't think we have. And I think it is an interesting uh, point. I, I, it did cross my mind, so I'm glad you, you remember it. Uh, <laughs> I had forgotten about that step, but I don't know. I guess there is two ways. We can just check with them or go ahead, do it. We can make the decision and then just say, since dormant state, right, allows them to resume activity at any point, there is no damage done. So I think we can inform them that in reaction to their request, we responded by adding a dormant state and move Quill to that state. And if the situation changes, just let us know. That would be my my take on this. Arun. Hey, Arnold. I guess th there are a few more questions that at least I'm not very con I mean well thorough about. For example, one thing that comes up is, let's say when we move this project to dormant state, one of the discussion point that we probably missed last time is how do we bring it back into um, incubation, right? And when we bring it back into incubation, is it going to be the same maintainers or if what if somebody else plan to adopt this project and how do we provision that because this is now coming back from dormant state and if we mandate that it's the same set of maintainers they have to come back after some time then we need a way to i mean keep them updated or keep track of them so these are some of the questions that comes associated with it all right sounds like a Bunch of good questions. Oh, wait, Daniel, you had your hand up. My question was the exact same one. Um, now that we have a real use case, when, so it's, well, I read the dormant page, the TSA decides to move it out, but what are expectations? Can it be the same maintainers? Can it be new maintainers? What if new maintainers want to come in and the old maintainers don't? What if there's a power struggle? You know, how do we handle that? What's our, what's our plan ahead of time? Or do we just want to figure it out when someone wants to do it and, and make the call at the moment based on the facts at hand. Nathan. I would propose that we can figure that out after we move to, to resolve this. It feels like um, moving it to the dormant state is in the spirit of what the maintainers have requested themselves. And we should follow up with them on uh, what we decided um, and invite them to the discussion on what would happen if they proposed it to back as a project, um, which I would expect it would follow just the same process that any new project proposal would follow. And if the maintainer said it's different, that's something we would expect them to call out in their proposal. All right, thank you. Any other opinions? Halt. I agree with David. I think the only question though is, uh, what do we do if we get like a, I mean, maybe we don't even have to worry about this, but if we get a hostile resurrection, um, basically where somebody attempts to resurrect the project and the original maintainers aren't okay with that. I think that's probably not a super likely thing. And I think we should probably go ahead and move the project to dormant state because it's what the maintainers wanted. 
uh, but it just might be something to consider. Dano, go ahead. I think if the maintainers wanted it dead, they should have proposed it to go to deprecated. And I'm also comfortable with making the call when it happens. Um, I don't think we can predict everything that will go right or everything that will go wrong. So I'm comfortable saying let's figure it out when someone wants to come out. Yeah, so at one point, I, I do think that we, although we haven't defined the process per se to, to move out of dormant, it's clear to me, and maybe it should be documented, but you know, that is going to take a decision from the TSC. And so I agree with what was said that I would expect us to, you know, look at the situation there at that moment. And uh, yeah, so thanks for pointing to the documentation we have. So. I think I think it's yeah we'll move to or from the dormant state. So it's clearly marked that it written that TSC will make the decision. So I think you know it would be surprising, but if somebody else came up and say, hey, I want to you know get that project of dormant state, I would imagine we would say, wait, who are you? And uh, we would check with the previous maintainers to see if they're okay with this and all that, right? And we do 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 do. do oh, sorry, you diligence at that moment. I don't think we would accidentally give away the project to somebody else if that were ever to happen. So I don't think we have to be too worried about these cases. I think we the, we are the gatekeeper and we can you know ensure that nothing bad happens at that at that time. So so I'll uh, I'll reiterate my motion then that we are moving quill to dormant and we'll inform the 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 maintainer and uh, let them know that you know when they want to move out of dormant they should come back to the TSE to make the request and that's it and you know the likelihood is they would just come back and say hey just like i told you you know I was out for a while, but now I'm back. Can I please get reactivated? Then we would just move back to incubation in not much of a process, and that would be it. So, are we okay with that? I second. Thank you. So, let's do a quick. Uh, vote we're not going to do a roll call for that but uh, we can do a okay everybody in favor says hi uh, hi 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 anybody wants to abstain anybody wants to uh, object all right so this passes unanimously thank you Okay, next one is a bit more open-ended. So as part of the Hyperledger, I mean, the Firefly proposal, there were a point of discussion about connectors and plugins that seems to come up quite frequently in different projects. And um, like in the, uh, in the interop world, we have the Cactus project for one, you know, that uses this kind of connector to blockchain frameworks. And so Tracy raised the question saying, hey, isn't that something that we should consider maybe tackling more broadly, you know, say, hey, should we have this kind of like components that could be defined maybe at a higher level that could be shared across projects that need to connect to blockchain frameworks? So Tracy, you tell me if I didn't capture the question right, but that's my recollection. Yeah, I was gonna go see if I could see the question that I asked, but I'm pretty sure that's pretty much it, right? We have uh, a number of projects that have been talking about plugins or connectors, and uh, it just felt like, you know, maybe there's some sort of um, way we could work together. Right, on, on some project that would allow for standardization across the, the different frameworks, across the different projects that need connectors, right? Um, so I, 
I don't know what that looks like, um, but that was kind of something that just hit me as I was reading through the Firefly proposal. Right, which unfortunately we lost the comments and now we don't have a link to them anymore. Cool, URLs don't change, so let's try that. Um, all right, so any reactions? I mean, you know, as I said, it's a bit open-ended. The question is, is that something we want to look at more seriously, investigate, see if there is any change, something like this could be done? Does it make sense? Do people, you know, are people interested in working on something like this? Or we just leave it as it is today and, you know, pretty much it means, you know, you're just hoping that people somehow can uh, peek at one of uh, each other's project and see if there is code they could reuse, but it's more random and organic than, you know, kind of trying to force the issue, ensuring that there is some shared the code where it could be. I see we have Jim on the call. Welcome, Jim. What's your opinion on this? Do you think the kind of plugins you guys have in Firefly to connect to the different blockchain could be, you know, generalized to be useful outside even of Firefly? Or is it very application or, you know, layer specific, I should say, because you're not really an application either, but. Yeah, hi, hi Arnold. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so I, I replied on the, the thread in the original uh, proposal. Uh, I can provide a link. Uh, it's still available um, if it's helpful. Um, and Peter also uh, from Cactus also gave input. But, um, my my uh, opinion at the moment is <clears throat> in order to keep the Firefly uh, API uh, abstract enough across the different uh, protocols, we, we keep it pretty uh, slim. Um, and it's mainly for serving the purpose of uh, cross membership data uh, broadcast or uh, uh, private member, uh, private trend, um, message uh, pinning, so and event listening. So we keep it pretty lightweight. Uh, I don't know everything about Cactus for sure, but I, I suspect Cactus will uh, need different kinds of um, APIs uh, with the blockchain, maybe getting. Um, uh, Requiring for a particular state commitment uh, for Merkle proof purposes. So it's going to be pretty different uh, how we use blockchains uh, between these two projects. Uh, on the other hand, I think both can benefit from a well defined RESTful API that is then adapted uh, to the individual blockchain through the, the more uh, low level SDKs. So on that, on that level, uh, it's going to be common. So maybe we can at least look at, you know, architectural um, best practices of how to do that, uh, what SDKs they use, uh, and how to deploy those things to make it um, work the best. So even if the API design is not exactly the same, there there may still be um, you know, uh, both implementation and, uh, uh, and architectural best practices that could be uh, common between the two. Don't know if that makes sense to uh, Tracy or, or Peter. Well, we have hot, so that's good. Thanks, Jim. Hot, yep. you're next. Hey, P Jim, I don't think P uh, Peter's on the call today, so you're stuck with me, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, I think it's really interesting. And uh, I was going to ask if you'd be interested in potentially coming to a cactus meeting to discuss this further. Uh, yeah, would love to. Uh, Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific. Um, if next Monday works, I'll send out an email and we can try to put you on the calendar. Next Monday, <clears throat> uh, what time you said again? 7 p.m. Pacific. OK. Um, nope, sorry, I, that, that's not right. It's not that time next week. 
um, we've moved to rotating meetings. Uh, so okay, so it's next early morning. Week, it's 8 a.m. Pacific. It's all right, guys. You can take that off. We'll figure it oh. out. But sorry yeah. for the sorry TSC for putting you through this. No, no, um, but it's okay. I'm glad that you know there's some connection being made and there is going to be some follow up. I think that's great. Thank you, guys. To the, you know, I'll for send doing out that. an email to the cactus list uh, cool. this morning sometime. Yeah, just very quickly, Hart. Uh, I love to uh, uh, to join the Monday meeting. Time works perfectly. Awesome. Okay. Great. Angelo. Yeah, just a comment on, on, on this interface. I like this uh, the, the, this thing. I, I see definitely um, there's a structure that it's interesting. Um, uh, there's an interface that might be interesting is that of the of a trusted oracle. Suppose that I want to learn uh, that Alice wants to learn something about a blockchain. And uh, so what, what, uh, what can Alice do? So she should have a way uh, to retrieve a piece of information, possibly a proof, sorry, a piece of information coming from this blockchain attached with a proof that has certain, uh, um, has certain guarantees in such a way that Alice can check uh, that uh, this, uh, the piece of information that she's receiving from that blockchain um, is meaningful, uh, meaningful enough, which means also that uh, it can be trusted. Uh, so that's definitely a general interface that uh, can be very useful in the context of interoperability. And it's very, in, uh, very blockchain dependent because uh, what it means that a piece of data is, uh, um, is meaningful for a certain network might, might vary, right? Uh, so for Fabric, it might be, uh, the, this proof might be an endorsement for Ethereum uh, can be something else, uh, can be other sorts of signatures. For other, uh, for Corda can be you know, the signature of a notary uh, that says hey, this state exists, and this is the the state that are, uh, we are aware uh, um, we are uh, aware of. This definitely, I think there is something like this in Weaver uh, uh, already. I don't know if in Cactus uh, as well. But Hart, if you want me, I would also. If you can invite me as well, I would be very interesting. Uh, interested. Yeah, in absolutely. Um, should I? Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely invite you. Thank you. All right. Great. So. I think this is great. This, you know, we don't need to make it more formal than that. If there are people interested in digging a bit more into this topic, I think, you know, that's great. And if something comes out of it, so much the better. If not, if you guys in the end say, well, okay, these things are similar, but different enough, there's nothing here to do. It's okay also, but at least it won't be because we haven't thought about it. Anything else anybody wants to add on that topic? Otherwise, I'm happy to just leave it at that. All right, I don't see any hand coming up. So thanks again for connecting, guys. All right, so the next one is a long standing one. So we have this decision recorded on the common repository structure where we said the resolution, you know, says that each repo must add basically the repo lint JSON file. And we've talked about this before. It creates a bit of a maintenance nightmare because everybody's copying it. And now we have many, many, many copies of the same file. Although, and because there are copies, they're very unlikely to stay the same. And, um, I know that the, there's been some challenges in implementing it um, in the sense that, you know, some project that felt like the, the, the config file was not, um, uh, you know, tuned to their project. So depending on the language you use, the, the programming language and so on. And um, so some of us have made some changes to the to the common file that's in the uh, in the repository, but uh, I'm not sure that has happened everywhere. And yet, in the meantime, you know, we said we should investigate further how to handle variations if there's a need for it. Although, of course, it kind of defeats the purpose because the idea was well, we want to enforce some kind of you know. Uh, similarity uh, across the different projects in terms of you know what file to find and so on but um i felt like okay we should at least modify the current 
decision, which I think in any case is wrong to tell people just copy the file. So Tracy. Yeah, so when we initially started this common repo structure, it was about making sure that each of the repos had a maintainer's file, a contributing file, a, you know, license file, those sorts of things, right? And there, there was a number of things that were, these must exist versus these should exist. Um, and I think what ended up happening was Chris created this repo lint.json file as a mechanism to uh, programmatically check these things. But I think the spirit of what this proposal originally was, was what must a repo have? What should a repo have? Um, and I'd like to see, since repo lint.json has been such a painful process for us, if we could go back to the uh, kind of spirit of what this was and actually define what it is that a repo must have, what a repo is should have. So, um, you know, maybe it's more about repo lint.json is it the direction that we should have headed. We should have headed towards a very specific kind of definition of what repo structure should look like. All right, thank you. Um, I think if you click on the link there, common repository, that links to the decision, right? So, That was, there is actually the list, right? But you're right, it was based on repo linter. And at the time we said, okay, this is great. We even have a tool that people can run to enforce the structure so much better. And we said, okay, everybody should just copy that over and uh, every now and then run it so that uh, they can figure out whether they are um, compliant or not. I actually not sure that if we stick to the original list, it's such a, you know, it is a problem. Maybe it's because we have extended beyond that, you know, such as checking, like if you have headers and so on, like copyright and whatnot, which we narrated actually from Ripolinter or Ripolint rather than, you know, our own um, doing. Can you scroll down a bit? How far does that list go? Yeah. See license detectable by licensee, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. There are things like binaries not present. It's obviously a good thing, but it was clearly not in our list. It wasn't something we said, oh, you must not have binaries, right? So one way to achieve what you, I think getting close to what you're saying, Tracy, is to actually scale back the config file to the minimum that matches what we said we really ought to have in every repo. And that would, I think, probably, you know, work for every project because you avoid these issues of language dependencies and, you know, and so on. Or are you just against Ripple Inter at this point because you just don't think it's the right tool? <laughs> no, I think if we uh, if we can make it work with a limited set of what we wanted, right, which is this list of files, yeah. which I agree uh, with. This is probably a should, right? Notices is probably a should, um, but I think all of the other ones are must. Um, then. I, I think that repo linter would work across all of our repos, or they should work. It should work across all of our repos, right? right. Um, and if we want to do something that's, you know, in addition to that, I think the projects can choose to add their own repo lint, lint .json that's a, you know, project specific repo lint.json, um, you know, a fabric repo lint or a Saute repo limp or whatever the case may be, right? Yes. Um, then, then they can add additional things that they want their repo to do. But I think for for Hyperledger, these are the things that are must in this notices is probably a should. Um, okay. Can I thank you? Yeah. yeah so, 
This was proposed about a year and a half ago. And um, when we went through this, I said, is focusing on a tool the right thing to do? And the discussion suddenly went through to let's just vote this through. So my response to that was to go to the community management tools in the Hyperledger Labs and specify out in a readme.md, which I posted into the TSC, that this is what a more um, non-prescriptive, a more like what, what Tracy was describing, a more standardized approach. Here's what the standard rather than having the tool drive it. So a lot of this work's been done. It's just been forgotten about in the Hyperledger Community Management Tools repository. And that's where we've had the canonical repo linear.json live for a while and where edits have been being put into them. But I outlined, you know, and we people iterated on this. So we do have some of those um, higher level standards of this is what it would expect it to be. But what do you think it. about yes, yes. what do you think about this idea of reducing to a real minimum set of rules that would work across the board that we want to really insist on? Yeah. Some of the problem is some of the some of the requirements aren't well formed. Like you need to use well, not well formed, not not easily mechanically verifiable. Such as you need to have a build system. Well, if you have a .json file, do you really need a package .json? And that's what Repo Linter does. If it sees any .js file, it just assumes you need a package .json no matter where that .js is, and it starts spitting out the warnings for it because it saw a JavaScript file versus what the requirement is, is that you have CI, CD configurations, whatever those look like. Yeah. Okay. Any other opinions or ideas? Right. Sure. Uh, how about doing it much like we do with the other badge and make it declaration based and and you know you can check up the veracity of the declaration later. Yeah, you know, much like the our project status badge, right, where it's all declaration based, or the uh, the one on GitHub whose name I'm forgetting right now that every project has, and you know forego all of that. All right. Any opinions? I mean, Troy, I know you, you investigated and spent a bit of time trying to, you know, make this work and it didn't work very well for you. What do you think of all of that? Sorry, I know, did you say Troy? Yeah, I, I was asking yeah, your opinion we'll because I know you yeah, spent a bit of time on trying to yeah, we make made this it. work. And you know, we, we made it work. So we copied the uh, file into uh, Aries Framework Go um, and uh, contributed back the changes that we made. Um, uh, one of the issues, of course, is, you know, warnings aren't very visible. Um, and some of these basically rules are hard to have across projects. So they only end up being warnings um, unless you copy the file and um, um, kind of modified a bit to make the mirrors um, more tailored for the repo. Um, so, you know, how you, how you handle license headers and things like that might be a little bit different across repos, which files are involved, right? So some, sometimes maybe it's, you know, language dependent. So it, 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 there, there's some challenge in having like a completely common file, of course. Um, but anyways, we, we, we just made it work. But so, the, you know, the, there is a, I mean, the tool itself, I have to say, I, I have to agree that the output is not the most user-friendly. <laughs> so you really have to squeeze your eyes to try and see what it's, what it, you know, what it's written. But, um, but so I, it, I hear there's a couple of, at least couple directions. It seems like nobody is really happy with the status quo. So we need to make a change. And it seems like we can either go like what Tracy was saying is like, let's go back to the original goal of getting a minimal set of files, um, you know, pr are, that make sure they are present and forget ripple inter or change ripple inter to this config file that just changed those states. Sorry, check 
those things and nothing else. Or we can do like uh, what Rai was suggesting, we forget ripple inter altogether and, and, and do this kind of self-declaration. We still need to have a documentation clearly at some point saying, this is the list of files you must have, these are the files we should have. And maybe, you know, in uh, recognition of what uh, Dana was pointing out, we have a file there that might help and needs to be reviewed and maybe updated with that uh, in mind, I don't know. But so what do people think? I mean, which way would you rather go? I prefer a narrative standard. It makes it more flexible when technology changes. Wait, say that again, you prefer what standard? A narrative standard. So you're saying not to have the tool and, and you know, not enforcing a use of a specific tool. Yeah, the tool can be advisory, the tool can be recommended, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's the narrative standard that, that rules. Yeah. Tracy, what do you think? This does fit your, that matches what you're pushing for? I think that, yeah, I think that works. And I think we could um, definitely start with Dano's uh, link that he gave us to the, the GitHub repo where he's obviously put some thought into this. Um, I think there's probably some things in here that uh, weren't, in, or there's some things that were in the original that aren't listed here, like the security um, one I, I noticed off the top, um, maybe the uh, code owners is probably a second one, but I think we could start with this list and merge it with the other and uh, come up with the, the right set of must required files versus the recommended files. Scroll up, security is in a man mandated content. There we go. Uh, okay. How are these must versus required? And Oh, with specified content. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so here's what I would suggest then. Let's make a proposal to, so we discontinue the requirement to use Ripolinter and therefore to copy this Ripolint JSON file into every repo. That's step one. And then step two, we have to, you know, start an activity on reviewing this readme and deciding whether this is the golden uh, rule or not, if there's any amendment that need to be changed. But the, I think can be done in parallel or uh, with a bit more time, obviously, we can just do it now. But I, I don't like the situation we're on, where we actually, I think in the, in the report, right, we're asking people, have you, have you copied the Ripple Inter JSON file or are you using Ripple Inter? We should stop trying to enforce this as soon as possible. That's my primary goal because I think that we're pushing people to do the wrong thing. So I have two, yeah, so it's a, it's twofold the proposal. The first one is, you know, um, and the requirement to use Ripple Inter. Step one and step two. I second. Let's I second that it. proposal. Uh, All right. Thank you. So let's get to, let's go through this. Maybe we can do it like we did before. Everybody who's agreeing to end the requirement to use Ripple Inter says aye. Aye. Hi. 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 This is the mute delay, you know. And uh, anybody wants to abstain? Anybody wants to object? All right, so this passes unanimously. Thank you. And then I think so we, we don't have to make a decision on this. I would just say, hey, everybody, have a look at this file that uh, Tracy is looking at right now, which is in the uh, community management tools uh, repo. 
and you know let's have a look at this review this and then people can raise issues we can use even the github issues for that matter and then we can have a look and if there's like issues that get raised we can then look at them and make a decision once we have done a few iteration we can decide on okay this is capturing indeed the resolution with that we really want people to follow uh, you know in terms of what the common repository structure ought to be and then i think we'll have really close this issue altogether make sense so it's a bit of an open invitation for everybody to look at this there's a danger that if nobody does anything then <laughs> but i guess we'll have to we will have to make another decision to point to this saying this is indeed the golden rule for the common repository structure which we still have that that still stands right we have decided we would we would have a common repository sorry repository structure that everybody would comply with it's just not completely defined because we haven't pointed to a place yet where it defines it but that would be the place all right i'm happy with that for now any other comments on this otherwise we can move on all right let's move on Rai, i think you brought that one up there's a proposal to create a contributor experience working group i saw Rai snuck into the call earlier i did i apologize Hello. for being late it's all yes right. um so actually, I think I created this at the behest of, uh, I don't remember. And then Okay, so that's So you don't so that, know what okay. this was about? No, I'm, I'm So this point that Tracy is pointing to is actually uh, the, the source of my confusion because that meeting was earlier this week. Uh, David, if if David is on the call, Boswell. Yes, David is. Yeah, I'm on the call. So, is the question what is the idea behind this proposal? Right, and the discussion that was yesterday or uh, Monday. Oh, yeah, I. Okay, yeah, so I can address both of those. So, I mean, as far as this proposal goes, I mean, I think it's similar to things we've talked about in the past. Anything that we can do as a group to invest more in thinking through, you know, how do we remove barriers to entry? How do we encourage more people to get involved? How do we, you know, support, you know, as the, as the name of the group, as the name of the proposed group implies, you know, how do we improve the contributor experience? So I think that's the intent behind that working group, you know, I think we've been doing things on an ad hoc basis, you know, for example, Arun's been working on an aggregator that, you know, the start here aggregator that helps pull all the development activity in one place. I and mean, I think that does improve the contributor experience, for example, but that's, you know, an individual thing. Do we want to do more of a concerted effort to, to look more holistically across all the projects, you know, all the community and see what other projects we could do. So I think that's the idea behind the contributor work group experience. As far as the question goes about that, the blog post, I mean, I think that's a similar effort that's come up organically from the community. So just to give a little background on that, that blog post is from a number of different people from different special interest groups that have decided that they, they've identified that they've somewhat been in silos and that after having recent conversations, they realize there's a lot more overlap across groups. So for example, you know, we have a climate action group and we have a trade finance group and we have a supply chain group and they're all working on different things although there are use cases that span all three of those groups right I, you know i think for example they've identified that a green finance or a, a, a green finance project or a project that looks at the carbon emissions across you know the supply chain of a product like the product carbon emission that these span different groups so there's a lot of interest coming from special interest groups to work more together so that's been the genesis of that post you know they did reference the idea of a new working group i mean i don't know 
I, I wouldn't say, you know, I think that's similar to the idea of a contributor experience working group, you know, how do we help more groups within the community collaborate together? So maybe we could, you know, fold those two ideas together, but that's the genesis. It's, it, that blog post came up somewhat separately and organically from the community and the special interest groups. Uh, um, but again, I think they're pointing to a similar thing. You know, there are places in the community where the, you know, contribution experience you know, could be improved. And that I think it's great. They raised their hand and flagged, hey, we want to do more to get, you know, people across the, you know, these groups collaborating, not just within these groups. So I don't know if that answers the question about where that blog post came from. Um, but again, I think it's a good sign that people are stepping up and saying, hey, we, we care about the contributor experience. And this is one thing that we want to do to help improve it. So yeah, maybe we can view them as, you know, similar and complementary. All right, so there is, since I think we now have two questions at hand because there's the question of this group, does it exist? And uh, if we haven't uh, heard from it, uh, I mean, uh, about it officially until now, and is it even real since we're supposed to approve them as Tracy points no, no, out? And, uh, sorry, as far as that goes, yeah, I think that was just some unfortunate wording. The, the, and I've talked to the people behind the post. They actually had a call earlier this week after the blog post went out. This is very much a proposal. They're throwing it out for, for feedback and comment. I think the way the blog post was wording, worded made it sound like it had been done, but I think that's just a, the, the main author was, is not a native English speaker. I think it's just, it's, it was never intended to say, hey, we've created this thing. It was more, hey, we, this is a thing we want to talk about. What's your thought? Okay, so and and to be clear, I mean, I'm not offended because you know if people are eager to do something like this, I think we shouldn't discourage them just because they didn't follow the right process. But uh, but then there's the question of indeed whether we, sh I mean, you know, whether we want to create separate working groups here. It seems to me that the working groups we have already often struggle due to lack of activities and participation. I don't think it's very smart of us to spread too thin. And I would uh, be in favor of trying to hijack the energy that seems to be behind this proposal on collaboration and, and suggest that they also tackle this question of, uh, you know, uh, contributor. So I, I went back and looked at the April 29th uh, TSC meeting. And I think that this comes out of uh, this page that Arun uh, put together, which is starthere.hackerledger.org. And I, put, I just posted a link in the uh, in chat. And I, I think it was to put more content there. You know, it, was, it was basically to increase the, the, you know, the quality and depth of uh, of a page like this. Yeah, agreed. And I do think there are, I mean, to, to Arno's point, I mean, I think there is a number of different things that we could pull together so that we're not spreading things too thin. There is start here, there's the interest from the SIGs. You know, I think what we just talked about earlier in the call about us wanting to do more to make sure the maintainers have, you know, the resources that they need and having these orientation calls. I think there's a few different threads that maybe could be pulled together here into one more of a concerted effort. All right. So what steps should, can we take now to try and, you know, make sure we're making progress on this? David, are you in touch with all these people and can you engage with them and try to figure out what should be, what, what could be done so that maybe we have a, a, a better defined proposal? Sure, I have been in touch with them. I mean, you know, as, as you know, staff are point of contacts for the special interest groups. So a number of the special interest groups that I support have been behind that proposal. So yeah, I mean, I can. So it sounds like the request is to maybe fold these two ideas together. Is that correct? That's the recommendation. At least they should they should consider doing that, since you know, I, as we all said, I mean, now uh, it, it would seem wiser not to create too many working groups. 
Agreed. And as far as maybe something that's missing from this proposal, I guess we need some chairs. Um, perhaps we could find one of them to step up as a chair. Maybe it makes sense to have, since there's you know two parts of the community, maybe we want a you know a chair from maybe the the use side of the community, the SIGs, and maybe it would be good to maybe have a co-chair from the more technical side, from the project side. I mean, that I'm just kind of brainstorming a little bit, but you know, yeah, that no, could be. I, the the question of the chair was on my mind too, so I'm happy you brought it up. Uh, I think what you're talking about is reasonable to me. So I don't know if anybody from the technical side is interested in this, and maybe I can connect you to the people. We can start a thread together with the people from the you know special interest group side and talk about you know combining the two. Yeah, and I actually wanted to know. I mean, as do we have people here? Who are interested in joining such a working group? Because see, I mean, if we don't have too many people, or if we have none, we'll have to see. Uh, Bobby, I'd be interested in working on this from um, either a leadership position or just a member to try to get this done. All right, thank you, Arun. Hey, um, probably it's a comment or probably a different way of thinking my thought process on this is, so since we are considering this to be a collaboration platform where everybody can come together and put, put their ideas forward and move with whatever proposal they have, do we, I mean, can we think of an alternate and, and instead of saying, hey, this is, this is a way in which this collaboration platform runs and this is just like any other working group there is there are weekly or bi-weekly meetings which you need to attend and that's that's how we proceed instead of making that kind of thing can we have um, more of a consultation based leadership positions established for this uh, work special working group where if let's say two of the special interest group they think their projects are overlapping with each other they come together they they propose this idea to um, um, through this working group, and then they have their own um, stream established over there. Similarly, somebody else want willing to collaborate through this working group. They they have their own independence to work on what they come up with. Okay, I have to admit I'm not completely sure what they're trying to achieve here, and. Um, giving more independence to the, the innovation aspect or whatever they want to execute through this working group. I see. Well, but I think it's still, I mean, we still need to have some kind of a charter or definition of what this group is about. And so for now, that's the first item, right? It's, you know, are people interested in defining? And it sounds like you have some ideas, so maybe you should participate in the discussion, even if you don't participate in the eventual working group. If I can volunteer you. <laughs> I, do. I keep discussing things with David, so I think, yeah. And I'll put together those thoughts to and David and see where it, where it goes. Okay. Oh, great. Right. So what I heard is that Rune and Bobby are both interested. I can start threads. I can reach out. Yeah, so it sounds like identifying, thinking through chairs, thinking through scope are good ideas to do next. Exactly. So thank you. So, and David, you'll facilitate the discussion. Tracy has her hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to note, guys, there is a process that we have for creating a new working group, um, as well as a working group proposal that kind of, uh, well, those are the proposals, I guess. We have a template for this, maybe, um, that kind of provides you with introduction, scope, work products, collaborators, interested parties, proposed chair, right? So I think there's uh, stuff here that um, already exists that we could be using. Um, Rai, uh, just a note, uh, this template needs to be updated to reflect the newest TSC members, um, but, you know, there, there is some process that already exists for working groups that we could follow. Yep, that's a good reminder. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, thank you for that. 
All right, so I think we have a plan. That's good, thank you. So this is kind of the end of the agenda for today. I did want to point out that um, in addition, I created a new entry in the decision log for the backlog on the, the criteria for entering incubation. I thought uh, given, you know, what happened with the, uh, I mean, it was pretty clear through the Firefly proposal process. Uh, we, we, you know, this is not something that is well documented today, if at all. So we should try to define one. And um, I figured, well, you know, to, to acknowledge that this is something we want to do and we don't forget it, although I don't really expect us to, you know, I created this entry. I think uh, if there is somebody who is volunteering to lead like a task force kind of thing, that would be appropriate. And uh, to basically start drafting what this uh, criteria would be. I think that would be very helpful. See, people have commented quite a bit already, so that's cool. We could, um, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not sure the wiki page is the most convenient way to do this, but uh, I would imagine that, you know, the better way to actually develop the proposal is to do a pull request against the TSC repo to add the page that defines the criteria for entering incubation. And we can use the GitHub repo to discuss this. And once it's, uh, there is some, you know, draft that can be uh, put for the TSC for consideration, we can all look at it and, and, and then hopefully approve it or make some amendment as necessary before we approve it. That would be my uh, proposal for. But, you know, it's good that the discussion started. All right, we're out of time. So thank you all for joining. We'll leave it at this for now. Talk to you next week. Goodbye.